the vision house actually is uh, you know needed for us because basically we have a vision and our vision is to multiply. If you are asking what's really the need for the vision house, of course, we have all these purposes, but the main thing that has driven us to have a vision house is for us to be able to, you know, accomplish our vision to multiply. And that's why we need a vision house. Hey, my name is uh, Moises Antolin, and I serve as the lead pastor of our Vision Community Church in Perth, and at the same time, the global senior pastor of our global church, uh, VCGM. Hello, I'm Brother Nat. And I'm Sister Portia. And my name is Maricel. Hi, my name is Lawrence. Mm -hmm. I'm Shirley. And I'm Nilo. We've been, been with uh, MFL, MFL for, for three, three years. years. We've been with uh, MFL for uh, three years. And we will continue to say yes and... Amen and serving the Lord. Yes. Uh, MFL uh, stands for Married for Life. Um, it's essential, uh, it is essential in our church uh, uh, community because uh, it helps us, um, each married couple, to live more responsibly and um, fruitful and, satisfy and satisfying lives. Uh, it also helps us to um, to know our roles in society mm -hmm. and transform us on how we look and handle each other, right? And our future together. We felt that we are truly taken care of because we've seen the heart of the church for the couples and uh, we've seen as well God's grace in MFL ministry as the number of the couples attending the regular meetings of the MFL is growing and it's ways to nurture the couples in sustaining a healthy and lifelong marriage. car accident we had last 2020 it really had a great impact in our lives our way of life changed in a blink of an eye but in the midst of a hard situation God started to reveal to us things that we are missing when we had our old life God's provision are really evident in this space of our lives with the, with the MFL we really felt that you know we we belong we, we, we felt the love you know, in the midst of that hard, hard situation from the MFL. Well, um, through attending MFL gatherings, it helped us realize that marriage is God's idea. He has a good reason for designing it the way He did. Uh, in MFL, it serves as our source of encouragement, especially other couples, especially when our marriage has been tested. And um, it's also a constant reminder, especially when we are attending the MFL sessions. Uh, it's a reminder for us to realign our ways because sometimes there are um, many plans, uh, plans that not belong for the Lord, not belong in God's will. but. In attending uh, MFL sessions, we are being reminded to realign our ways to God's blueprint in marriage. MFL is an encouragement to all generations in the church, and it will elevate your relationship to the next level as the activities we are undergoing in MFL allow us to get to know better. We are also inspired by other couples by witnessing their relationship with one another and reflect on our relationship to continue growing in faith with the Lord. God is part of it. So uh, last month, which is February of this year, 2023, our contract of lease in the vision house that we have used for about a year now has, uh, you know, ceased. Remember that we have only, you know, leased half of the premise because we were not allowed to take all to have a place of worship and so we had only had uh, half you know of the premises 
in it is not because we don't want it okay we want to continue it's just because you know uh, we need to move because they found somebody who will occupy really the whole place so that's why uh, it's really challenging for us now that we don't have a vision house we don't want to you know stop that we will you know continue to keep searching and looking for the vision house To those who are not part of MML, I do encourage you to come along um, and I will assume you that something that you will find, especially that you, you know, you can apply to your marriage life and your mm -hmm. family. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it, re it really helps you to elevate your or to, you know, to improve your, ma your marriage life. Mm -hmm. It really helps us, you know, to make our relationship better and godly as well. Uh, I would say um, to appreciate your marriage journey and understand the challenges you both face in your marriage. Uh, just like in Ephesians uh, 5 verses 25 to 33 says, Paul teaches that Christ made marriage uh, a sign of his love for the church. So this means that a sacramental marriage allowed the world to see in human terms, in our terms, something of the faithful, creative, and self-emptying, abundant life-giving love of our Lord. Uh, we believe the MFL is a critical component of our church. This because families which make up the church are the foundation that uh, should be well established and when marriage is thriving the family is thriving so the church and the society is thriving as well so it starts with a strong family foundation and MFL is the best avenue for that I believe that as your pastor you know God has called us with a special purpose and that purpose will continue and you know be realized because God would want us to continue to be what? Transformed and empowered so we can influence the world. So my encouragement to all of us is to continue to pray. I know that, you know, we were already used to this, um, you know, but I believe that there is a reason for everything. So we just need to continue to pray. We need to continue to desire for another vision house. We would like to continue to hunger for more transformations of souls, more, you know, people to come. We don't want to stop dreaming for this. And our, our dream is not only, you know, for the communities to meet, but to have a place of worship, a place of education, of training, a place of prayer, a place of uh, people that can meet, you know, that's what we would like to desire. And we continue to believe and vision, we will continue our vision to multiply by 2025. Our theme for 2023 is to uh, take a stand, which means that we are going to, uh, you know, multiply the next generation. That's, uh, you know, what we need to take a stand, you know, by 2023. And I believe that this, uh, you know, next generation that we have in our church, they are the people that, you know, will rise up so that, you know, it will lead to multiplication by 2025. Mm -hmm. The other thing is that this is our mission statement. One of our mission statement is to, you know, raise up a younger generation for this, you know, community. And that's why it is always, you know, part of us. That is our theme for 2023. Hi, my name is Ben, and I'm part of Vision Production Team. After hearing the vision from our dear pastors, which is empowering the younger generation, our Vision Production Team has been touched to create a play, Take Charge, as a response to this vision. 
which is inspired by the lives of Apostle Paul, giving charge to his young apprentice, Timothy, to not let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example in your speech, in conduct, in faith, and in purity. It is actually the proof of our desire to counteract the worldly system and for it to be realigned to the godly system that God has intended for us from the very beginning. This godly system is one of the key words that has been sown to us by our senior pastor leaders last year and from that Tech Church has been born. So in order to uh, you know, uh, multiply the next generation, we have to go back to our multiply growth track. The steps in order to achieve this is uh, not different to what we are doing in our Multiply Growth Track and that is the three process is transform, empower and influence. And we have eight steps, you know, that we have been doing already since we started this, you know, I think a year ago and that is first is assimilation. So we would like to assimilate, you know, this younger generation into our church, into our community. And I think we have seen that. And number two, when they are assimilated or connected to our community, we would like to integrate them. Because if you are not going to integrate them to the community, they will be lost. So these are the, you know, like basic steps that we have. And we have seen this, you know, happening because you can see now that in the integration, we have youth nights, you have young adults fellowship, you have kids, you know, Sunday school, you know, you know, every Sunday you have this activities and I think we have seen how these steps has you know slowly you know uh, encourage our younger generation and we are not stopping with that we are now moving forward to number four which is uh, uh, number three which is the devotional you have seen I believe that you know even our kids are being taught how to make their devotions into soap uh, we have the young adults, you know, uh, we are sharing soap in our youth nights. They are all encouraged to do soap devotions because we believe that in order for them to multiply, they need to multiply God's word in their lives. And so now they move forward to number four, which is the lessons for foundational lessons, which some of you and the youth and the young adults have gone through. They move to number five, which is the uh, you know maturity lessons. And then uh, after that, number six is the leadership. We have the leadership intensive course, which you know many of our young adults now are involved to, and we would like everyone to be involved too so that we're going to multiply and then we have number seven which is for the ministerial you know the master classes that we're going to have you know in the future and number eight which we are already having is the vision leadership college right the theological you know aspect because we would like you know that these young people who has been called by god will be equipped you know to teach to preach and in order to lead you know our you know next generation My name is Monica and I serve across a few ministry departments at Vision Community and lead the worship team here. My name is Claire, I'm from the Vision Kids Ministry and also assisting in Vision Production team. Yeah, so it was during a discipleship meeting that I was asked to preach at a Sunday service. And he dragged on the first two names and then lastly it was my name. My initial reaction was, I saw this coming. Um, but as the days went on in the preparation for that day, things got harder. Uh, I felt defeated, I felt doubtful, and in fact, I thought, why me, over and over again? Uh, I really did not think I was good enough. And now that may or may not be shocking coming from a pastor's kid, and let alone someone who led worship in church, but it was real, and after all, we're just human, right? My initial reaction is very nervous actually quite a lot of pressure. There is indeed, I guess, um, the weight of being accountable for every word that I will say in that pulpit. There is that, I would say, reverent fear, the fear of adding or taking away from the very words of God as mentioned in Revelation 22:18. 18. 
So growing up in church and being raised in a godly Christian home makes it so, so much easier to fall into complacency and in your comfort zone. Um, and after saying yes to preaching on that Sunday, I realized very quickly that this was God's way of reminding me not to fall into exactly that. Throughout the entire preparation, our pastors never failed to guide and mentor me. I was taught to really dig deeper into His Word. It was the start of learning and cultivating how it is to shift my understanding of God's Word from what I think it means into what it really means. I felt God say that these opportunities were never for the most articulate, intelligent, and experienced. And because of this, I now feel more confident in every aspect of life. God reminded me that He has chosen and called me just as I am. And I am so grateful for a church community that prioritizes the empowerment of the younger generation. I'm very blessed that, you know, Pastor Moises and our pastors have been there every step of the way. Um, he's helped us a lot in constructing even on how to actually preach. So a big step onto that is just the support, the support of our pastors and the training and the equipping they provide to us in that, I guess, it's not even two weeks, it's almost a month or so of preparing for that. Um, 15 minute preach or exhortation. As we all know, our current generations of young people are the generations that are receiving the heights of the worldview system we are now based today. For us, empowering this younger generation means to shape their worldview and their system according to the Word of God and His ways. We believe that just because their worldview is shaped, it doesn't mean that it is shaped well. And that is why even with our casting for this musical play, the young people are encouraged and are illuminated initially with the Word of God and its godly system, first before the ongoing creative input of the musical play. You know, as it says in the life of the Apostle Paul and Timothy, there's going to be a huge like, amount of persecution in stopping you on doing that. But like the Apostle Paul and Timothy, they just take a stand. They took a stand on preaching the Word of God and keeping themselves as an example as they buried themselves in, you know, in living the Word of God itself first before preaching it. I want to encourage those who have one, in one way or another experienced the, the same experience that I had in terms of when it comes to sharing um, the Word of God and sharing the good news. I just want to let you know that it it's not about where you've come from or how long you've been in church or known Christ. It's really about your personal relationship with God. And, you know, like I said, God has chosen and has called you just as you are. And um, over time, as long as you ground yourself in His Word, ground yourself in a community that, that really uh, envisions to empower you, be assured that, you know, God, whatever you do and whatever you say, God is going to equip you and He's going to champion you. He's the one that's going to qualify you. And so um, it's not about your past, it's about where you're going. So I encourage you to keep going and keep um, keep your faith in Christ. The, the thing is, they need to feel that they are part of the community. And I believe and I pray that every one of you should think of ways, you know, how to do that. I believe it is more on imparting life and relationships where somebody else would feel that, hey, I am part of this community. So you need to encourage. This is for everyone. And let me note that, you know, when we say that we would like you to become a leader, the leadership that we would like to, you know, convey here is not a leader by position. We would like to encourage everyone, when you are connected, when you are assimilated, when you are part of the community, we would like you to be encouraged, you know, to become a leader. That means you need to, you know, encourage, you know, another person in Christ. If you're encouraging a person for Christ, then you are a leader. Okay, this is what we would like to, you know, have that every one of us are part of the, you know, uh, vision. Our vision is to multiply by 2025. 
The end result is that we will multiply in numbers. Genesis chapter 28 verse 3 says, May God Almighty bless you and make you fruitful and increase your numbers until you become a community of peoples. But before that happens, we want to multiply our personal growth in Christ so that we can multiply growth to other people. And therefore, if that happens, we can genuinely multiply in numbers by 2025. This is the reason that we have designed a so-called multiply growth track, which we call MGT, so that we can follow and that everyone is guided with clear steps to multiply. Hi, I'm Matthew Tayang Mercado. Hi, I'm Joshua Dupaya. Hi, my name is Colette. I'm part of the Young Adult Ministry. And I'm part of the Youth Ministry. And I'm a part of the Vision Kids Ministry as a kids teacher. Over the last few weeks, we have emphasized this year's theme of empowering the younger generation. And this is the same heart that we have for the Vision Kids Ministry. This means that our sole purpose is to raise our children to become true leaders, influencers, and servants that will impact their own generation for God, and one that will bring Him honor and glory. Youth is where we build a community for young people to nurture and build a relationship with God. As the youth mature, we want to cultivate a culture where God is in the center. Whether they come from our own kids' ministry or outside the church, through the invites of our other youths or other people from our church, we want to support our church's vision by aspiring to guide and teach the youth the Word of God. And there are so many challenges that the, they face as a young generation, and it's in our heart to empower and equip the youth to be able to do greater things for God's kingdom. So this ministry was birthed from the need to care for people that are no longer kids, no longer youth, or not even married yet. Um, time goes on and we're not kids anymore. We find ourselves in between being young and old. You know that old saying, once we were small, but now we have grown tall? Uh, it is our heart for the ministry to serve, care, and teach young adults. We hope to cultivate a community where they feel belong, a community where we can develop meaningful friendships with other believers, and to be in a space where we can grow to become the men and women God has called us to be. Being a kids teacher has impacted me personally by encouraging accountability. When you're teaching kids, you have to learn to be accountable for the way that you act and behave. And in doing so, it has enabled me to become a better person. Our children really do know the difference when you teach them something in class and then they see you doing something different outside. It's the whole essence of leading them by example wherever you are. The benefits that I see in these kids are that they have become more enthusiastic um, and excited to learn about the Word of God. And that is an incredibly inspiring thing to see, especially in today's generation. Vision Kids Ministry is not just something you do on a Sunday Kids Church and then you turn off all the other days of the week, but one that you carry and is embedded in you as a person. Vision Kids have taught me to be on the constant process of examining my heart and everything that flows from it so that I can truly serve them and the Lord in the best way possible. It was out of my comfort zone to be diving into the youth ministry. The responsibility to guide and teach the youth was a bit scary and heavy, to be honest, but God doesn't lead us to a place we can't handle. And I believed in that, that God was so good in having people surround me with support and advice and leading. And of course, in other things, I've learned so much in different aspects and perspectives of serving God in the youth ministry. And I continue to still learn as he continues to work in me and through me in serving in this ministry. No matter what age you are, whatever physicality or <laughs> whatever generation or um, how old you think you are, <laughs> really, um, it's all a matter of, you know, um, growing in the Lord. 
So if you are struggling to think whether this is a ministry or like this is a place, a community to join, um, it's not about what you see, but it is about, you know, living a life, that abundant life that God has called us and has promised and has given us already. I would like to invite everyone who wants to be part of our community core teams who will help us implement this multiply growth track. We want you to take our leadership intensive course training because you're going to learn the steps on how to lead a group that cares for one another and learn the words of God together and grow together in the words of God. In doing this, we will surely expand because we're going to have more groups that will eventually continually, you know, multiply. And second, I would like you all to engage in our communities. I would like to invite every one of you, those who are married to our MFL, Married for Life community, to our young adults, if you are a YA, to our youth, to our kids, to our men, to our ladies. You have a community to belong. 